Hi, thanks so much for watching my video blog. I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters, and today I'm going to talk to you about tax deductions while selling or buying property. Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about tax deductions when you're purchasing or when you're selling property. I was recently talking to a client, and they mentioned to me that they weren't aware that a lot of the costs of selling a home could be written off. So obviously the disclaimer is always going to be that you should always check with an accountant to make sure that you're writing off the right things. However, there's some general things that I can share with you that are generally known to be able to be deducted. So when you're selling a property, all of your fees and costs associated with selling the property can be deducted. So that means commissions, escrow, title fees, any costs of uh, fixing up the property when you're putting it on the market, you want to keep all of that information because all of those things can be write off so you can give that to your accountant in order to maximize your profit out of the home. So if you're selling your primary residence, you can actually take up to $250,000 if you're a single person or $500,000 as a deduction basically of any gain that you make off the sale of the home. So this is great news and in fact sometimes people will move every couple of years to be able to take advantage of this deduction. Now if you move less than that you may still be able to take a deduction as well. You just want to check with your accountant about what you can and cannot deduct. Now if you turn that property into an investment property you could live there or you could actually rent it out for two years and then sell it if that makes sense for you. you, as long as you've lived in the property two out of the last five years. Then, if you decide, let's say you've rented out a property for five years, and you decide you wanna sell it at that point, but you don't wanna pay the capital gains tax on the property, you can also do what's called a 1031 exchange, where you sell the property, you have an intermediary hold the property, hold the money in a qualified intermediary account and then you purchase another property of equal or greater value. This will allow you to defer any kind of capital gains that you would have on the property and put it in a different property. In theory, you could actually move back into that property after two, three, four years and then consider that your primary residence. There's a lot of different things that can be done when selling a property to help you save on your taxes and I can help you with that certainly. And if you need a referral to a great accountant, I can help you with that as well. When you're purchasing a property, same things apply. All of your escrow, title, and in mortgage interest is gonna be tax write-offs as well. So at the end of the year after you've purchased your home, I'm gonna send you your closing statement as well as when you sell your property with me so you have all of that information to give to your accountant. When you're living in the property year to year, you're going to be able to write off all of your mortgage interest as well. So there's some huge savings there too. And if you have any other questions about this or any other real estate related topics, feel free to give me a call and or email me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Remember, if you know someone who needs to buy or sell, please call me immediately or reply to this email and let me know who your friend is. 562-316-2915 or you can email me at melinda at theelmerteam.com. Thanks so much for watching.